So in the second part of this video tutorial we're now going to start talking about variable names and also data types. So pretty much any programming language is going to want to be able to keep track of bits of data um, throughout the program and to do that you're going to put this into a variable. And this is the same concept as you're used to really in using in maths um, where you've generally in maths you've used the letters, single individual letters to, to store numbers and to represent um, numbers that might change in your calculation. Um, in Python, the names of the variables um, can contain the letters A to Z in both lowercase and capitals. They can contain the underscore character and they can contain the numbers 0 to 9. The first character must be a letter or an underscore and cannot be a number. The other thing is that um, if you name a variable after uh, try using a, a keyword as a variable name is not going to work. You're not allowed to use things like for, if, return, def, class as the names of variables. Um, and if you try doing that, you'll just get an error. Um, you can technically use the name of a function like a print or type um, or even a file type like um, dict or file um, as a variable name. But it's generally speaking a very, very, very bad idea um, and you want to avoid it if at all possible. And to give you an example of the kind of chaos you can have if you start doing that, um, here's a simple example. So from the previous part of this video we were using abs as the absolute value function. But what we've done here is we've created a variable called abs to which we set the equal, equal to the value of 5. But when we do this, this means that abs, the name of the function, is no longer accessible to us. So when you try and do abs brackets minus 9, as though you were trying to calculate the absolute value of minus 9, it doesn't know what to do because it says, hang on, but abs is an integer with a value of 5, because that's what you've just defined it to be. Um, so you can see this sort of problem is very, very hard to track out what's going on, and so that's why you want to avoid doing it. So variable names do not have to be a single letter. So unlike maths, where the convention is that variables are always a single letter, in computer programming that's not true. And in generally speaking, it's better to make them sure they're not a single letter, but actually give them a name that gives you some hint about what that data might actually be. So, um, for example, if you have a variable for the x coordinate or something, probably calling it x coord might be more useful than calling it simply x. Um, uh, if you do occasionally end up using single letter variables, so for example i, just using the letter i, you might well do um, where you'd in maths be naturally writing just a single letter i. So for example you're doing a sum over a, a vector or something like that, you probably, uh, or talk about individual components of a vector, you might talk about a, a vector a with components which are a subscript i. Um, so in those cases where you, what you're doing is just simply counting over a, a, a set of integers, it's quite common just to use the letter i or j or k um, to mean just a single integer that you're counting up over. But if the data in the variable has actually got more meaning than just it's a number we're counting with, then you ought to give it a proper name. Each type of variable has associated with a, a type, and the type of a data tells Python basically how it should interpret what's being stored in memory in order to turn it into a useful value. So Python has a really rich range of data types. Um, so a quick survey of the important ones. You have things like the scalar types. So these are where you have a single value per variable. So integers, booleans, floating point numbers uh, and complex numbers are all scalar variables. Um, Actually, the Boolean is a slightly complicated one because it's, it's almost actually most like an integer um, in that it tends to have a value of 1 or 0, which it uses for true and false. Um, and that causes some problems later on. Um, then you have uh, sequences. So these are where you have collections of values where you have a set of values stored within, within one variable that then you know which what well, the order of the of the information is important so you know which value comes first you know which value comes second you know which value goes on to go goes to be the last value that's being stored and so some of the examples of things that are sequences would include a string 
uh, which is technically a sequence of individual letters. There's a list, which is just simply an ordered collection of any sort of data um, you want at all. Um, and then in Python 3, we also have a thing called bytes. This is sometimes called a byte string. So this is a sequence of 8-bit integers, like the number 0 to 255, um, which is often used to represent binary data. And the reason that is used to represent binary data is because the information stored in the memory of the computer is stored in individual bytes, where each byte stores a number between 0 and 255. And then the bytes are arranged in groups of 1024, which are called kilobytes. And the kilobytes are arranged in groups of 1024, which are megabytes. And megabytes are arranged in groups of 1024, which are gigabytes. And so on up through terabytes and petabytes and exabytes. And um, I think you've got on to zettabytes after that. Um, so the bytes data type simply is just a sequence of essentially um, what we stored straight in memory. Uh, and then we have some other types of collections of values, and there's a family of collection of, of types called mappings. And these are where the data values, they store multiple values of data, but they are indexed with a, some kind of key value, essentially a name. So rather than saying this is the first item, this is the second item, this is the third item, you can give each item of data a, a key and say um, that might be, for example, a string. So um, you could give it, I don't know, a name like Fred and say, OK, give me the bit of data called Fred, give me the bit of data called George, give me the bit of data called Mary, um, give me the bit of data called Megan, whatever, however you want to do it. Of course, you probably want to actually give the data slightly more sensible and reasonable names. But the idea is that rather than saying I can get it, work out which item of data it is by a, uh, the order in which it's stored, I can give it a name and get it back by name. And then we come on to various other types. Um, so, for example, file is in fact a type of data um, that represents a file on the on the hard disk of your computer. Um, none is a rather special one. None is a type on its own that's used to represent um, a null value. Um, so, where the, the it's not a zero, it's not a it's where there is no value. It's a, a genuinely there is no there is nothing here. Um, and that's given a value of none. Um, and then, in fact, it turns out that in everything in Python can be thought of as a data type. So even functions um, are a type of data, um, uh, including, as it turns out, data types. So the type of data is itself a type. Um, uh, and that can get itself quite fun. This is really where the power of Python comes in for kind of advanced programming techniques, but is well beyond the scope of this course. So um, there is a, a function, which is also rather confusingly called type, uh, which will tell you what type a variable is. Um, and then, as well as knowing what type of variable is, you might want to know um, where that variable is being stored. And is this variable a, a distinct variable, or is it simply another name for the same bit of data? So this comes a bit back to what happens when you actually create variables in Python. Um, so here's a little example. So we create a variable x and give it the value 123. So what we're actually doing there is we're storing 123 in the computer's memory and we're then saying let's associate the address in the computer where that memory where the 123 is being stored with the name x. So then when we do y equals x what we're actually doing is saying let's create a new name y which cuts the same address of memory that x does. So that means if you say, well, what's y? It turns out it says it's 123. But it's the same 123 that x thinks it's pointing to. Um, and so we can use id and show that that's what's going on. So first of all, what we do is we say, well, what is the type of x? And it says it's an integer. So it's class int. And then we say, well, what's its id? And it gives us a long number. That number doesn't itself have any meaning. It's simply just a, a, a big number that you can guarantee just refers and only refers to the variable x um, and anything else which is pointing at the same memory location. So when we say, well, what's y's id? It turns out it's the same as x's id. And that's because it's saying that um, x and y are both labels for the same place in memory. 
So then the uh, final thing is um, you might want to be able to go and check whether a variable is a type of is is a an integer or whether it's a floating point number or whether it's a string. And so you have a function is instance that you can use to test whether a variable is a particular given type. And so that's what we're doing on the last line of this example. We're using the is instance function to say is x an integer and then is y x a floating point number. And you can see it says yes x is an integer and no x is not a floating point number. And that can become quite useful if you're never quite certain what type of data you're dealing with to check whether you've got a, for example in this case, an integer or a floating point number. If you want to convert between data types, then you can do this with um, a set of functions. Uh, int and float will, for example, convert between, um, try and convert things into integers or try and convert things into floating point numbers. Um, so here's an example. If we say int 123.45, so 123.45 is a floating point number. Um, if we say turn this into an integer, what it does is it says, OK, that's 123. You need to be a little bit careful because, for example, if we say, tell me what an integer value for 123.56 is, it'll say, oh, 123. And that's because what the int is doing is it's just simply getting rid of the floating point number. Um, it's just discarding the bit after the after the floating point um, point. Um, that's not obviously the same as rounding the number. If you want to round the number, then you want to use the function round and not int. Uh, and then float does the opposite. So here we've got an example of converting a string, one two three point four five six, as a sequence of letters um, into a floating point number. Um, if you try giving float a string, or int for that matter, a string which is not um, something which can be recognised as either an integer or a floating point number, then it's going to throw an error at you. Um, and if you want to convert numbers to strings, then you can use str string and say turn, try and turn whatever I've given you into a string. Um, and then that will, in this case, simply undoes what we just did with the float function above. You need to be a bit careful though when you do conversions to booleans. And this is because as far as Python is concerned, any value that is zero um, or an empty value or none is going to be a boolean false. And any value which is not zero, is not zero length or is not none will be true. And that seems like fair enough um, until you try and do something like this. So what happens here is then convert the string false to a boolean. But the problem is that um, the string false is a sequence of characters which is not zero length and therefore by the rule above is true. Um, conversely, boolean of an empty string must be false because it's a zero length uh, string. So you just need to be a bit careful if you try converting things between uh, into boolean values. Um, if you want to convert a type into something you can print, um, then what you're actually ask after is its representation, um, which you can get with the repra function. This nearly always does it, almost the same thing as converting it to a string, but um, in some cases, uh, uh, converting things to a string and its representation are do actually give slightly different um, things to look at. So um, by using the representation function, you can get a thing you can print. Um, so representation of minus three two one is um, sorry minus thirty two j even um, is uh, comes out as a complex number that is um, shows both the real part and the imaginary part of the complex number.